All right. <clears throat> Welcome back. Uh, those of you that were patient enough to stick around after I was so rudely interrupted by my tripod trying to break, I ran out, fabricated a piece of tin to fix the shoe, and it's working for now. Um, I'm still having a few issues figuring out what kind of camera angles are going to work in here. Obviously, the focal distance of a webcam is quite a bit different than a phone. So you can bet as soon as I have the requisite subscribers, I will be right back to using my phone. Um, you know, the format just works so much better for what I do. Anyway, uh, in our live video number one, uh, quick recap. So, um, as you know, I've been working on a, on a belt. I'm kind of opposed to creating content for the sake of creating content. So I make whatever it is that I've got next on the list and then I'll make content that goes with it. So if I'm working on belts, I'm doing videos about belts. If I'm working on saddles, I'm doing videos about saddles and so on. Uh, in any case, edge finishing is one of those contentious, mysterious topics that people spend a lot of time arguing on the internet about. And uh, it's just not that hard. It's not something that's so difficult to get into. Um, and I'm just gonna go over how I do it via the quickest, easiest way. You know, when people look at a strap like this, you know, they're filled with dread. There's like an existential crisis, right? Either it's because they're gonna have to sew it, it's really not that big a deal, or even worse, they're gonna have to finish the edges. And I've seen all kinds of strap finishing uh, accoutrements, right? I mean, people have like jigs and two by fours and clamps and, you know, they've got dremels and sanding blocks and, you know, a variety of, of stuff. And the fact is, it just doesn't take a lot of stuff to put a really nice edge on a piece of leather. Um, prior to getting caught off, uh, or prior to getting cut off earlier by malfunctioning equipment, um, I gave you a quick look at how to uh, trim liners um, we'll do that next time. Uh, I went ahead, I went back, I prepared the edge. Now, when you're going to prepare an edge for burnishing, um, you know, I prefer to trim flush. Some people sand, but a flush trim is always going to be your cleanest. You're going to have to trim it flush and you're going to have to bevel it. Right. And that's going to set, you know, kind of your foundation here. Um, on a lined belt, I like it to be two thirds thickness roughly is the, uh, is the actual, body of the belt and a third of that is the liner um, simply because on a tooled belt you know you need the thickness so that you've got some depth to work with um, you know you could split it half and half but on a 12 ounce belt that only gives you six ounces and you can't get any depth out of that so um, let's see there we go in the case of something like this you know I go one third two thirds um, my total thickness here is about uh, I would guess 12 to 14 ounces. I don't think I've got my gauge over here to look, but it's about what I would want for a lined belt. So now that I have this, the big question is, how do I finish it? Um, so you're gonna need water. Uh, you're gonna need saddle soap. So this is Feebing's uh, white saddle soap paste. If you keep it around for long enough, it tends to get dried out. Um, if you throw a tablespoon of water or something in this, put the lid back on it, come out the next day, it's back to normal. So uh, don't give up on your saddle soap. It wouldn't give up on you. Um, you're going to need wax. Uh, some people like paraffin wax. Some people like beeswax. Some people like a blend. Generally speaking, I find beeswax is good for hot waxing edges. And you can actually add Damar resin to that to make it even have a higher melting point, you know, if you really want to uh, introduce some heat to it. Um, but what I find is it's too sticky. It's too hard. It's really hard to build enough heat by hand and not just make a mess of things. So um, I generally prefer uh, just a nice grade of paraffin. Um, I buy this stuff a pound at a time and I bought an old muffin tin at, uh, at uh, you know, Goodwill or somewhere. And uh, once in a while I'm in the kitchen making, uh, you know, cakes of wax. You'll make a bunch of these muffin guys and stack them up. They last forever. Um, they're awesome and it's a way better deal than spending, you know, however many dollars they charge for one at any of your popular retailers. Anyway, so I've got wax, I've got soap, I've got water. Last thing I need is a canvas glove. Um, 
This is made out of a fairly heavy double weave. Um, I don't know what the ounce weight is. Um, it's got to be, I would guess somewhere between 12 and 20 ounce, right? It's got to be uh, denser than denim, but not as hard as like a drop cloth. Um, if you've got an awning or a sail maker or anything like that around you, you can probably get it. You know, you pick up a yard and you forget about it. I sewed this on a home sewing machine, nothing to it. Fits over my hand. That's that. Um, now, I'm going to take a sponge here and just dampen it in the uh, in the water. Uh, do be careful if you choose to use this technique on bridal. Bridal is really prone to water spotting. And if you do this, just expect you're going to water spot your bridal. It's not going to be a great time. Um, any case, so I am fairly, oof, fairly liberally wetting the edge of this strap. Okay, you need to be able to get enough moisture in here <clears throat> that you can build some heat and uh, and bring that burnish up. In a perfect world, you burnish while the leather is still cased, but in this case where it's going to be lined and everything else, you can't really do that. So I've got the water, you know, kind of working its way into the edge here, <clears throat> making sure that, uh, you know, I've got a good amount in here. Now, when you look at the edge, a lot of times you can tell, I don't know if I'll be able to get this close enough up that you can actually see it. Uh, no, the lighting's not great. But you'll see along here, this uh, leather will get an almost kind of grayish color. And that means you've got enough saturation to work with. <clears throat> so we're going to let this sit for just a minute. Give me a chance to get another swig of coffee. And then we can get to work. Now, this whole process only takes, you know, a few minutes. Um, we're going to burnish top and bottom with saddle soap. And uh, once we're satisfied with that edge, we're going to apply wax and burnish, apply wax and burnish, and we should be done. So um, all in all, pretty simple. You know, I've done uh, demonstrations of this on Instagram um, repeatedly, and people just can't believe how quick it is. And, you know, it just doesn't take much. <clears throat> so I've got my glove. I've got some white saddle soap. You don't want to oversaturate. It doesn't take much. Um, you know, if you look at the glove, you can see uh, a little bit of that haze here, but it doesn't have to be particularly uh, thick. <clears throat> now, find your bench. Just lay it right on the edge, right? You need, um, you need a long edge of, of something to work with, right? So you can develop some pressure. You want to bring this flush. And... You just want to put a little body weight into it, lean down, and polish the edge. Okay. So I've got a pretty good color on the top side of this edge already. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to do the other side. And if you notice, it's not developing color the way you want it to. A lot of times it's because you don't have... Uh, you know, you don't have one of the ingredients, right? You need enough pressure, you need enough heat, you need it to be damp enough, and if you're not getting exactly what you want, you know, modulate these, these factors a little bit and see what you get. You know, here, I'm looking at it. <clears throat> There's a spot, I'm not sure. It might just take a little bit more, uh, might just take a little bit more water. We'll see. So, that's one side. I'm going to damp this edge, do the other side, and then see what we've got. <clears throat> so you'll notice, um, if you can see here, there's a lighter zone here where this has been beveled out toward the edge. If you don't burnish it from the bottom side, that doesn't go away, right? But after I burnish this, and this is lined with latigo, right? So latigo will actually take a, a decent burnish. <clears throat> so after I do this, you're going to notice that that line has gone away completely. And it's all like a nice, rich, uniform color that we want. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to get in, you know, on the tips of these. 
So, you know, pick it up in your hand, do what you need to do, but don't make this harder on yourself. <clears throat> that has to be, you know, save the difficult stuff for some other time because this should not be a long, painful process. This should be pretty short, pretty pleasant. All right, so this is round one of the burnish. Uh, man, I just, I really wish you could see more closely the uh, the edge there. You can see a little bit of the shine come off of it. Uh, a little bit more closely the edge quality there, but what we're gonna do now, we've done that once. <clears throat> and now that we've kind of got those harder edges burnished in, we're gonna wet it again. And, uh, and this time, I like to put the glove on my other hand and just <clears throat> pull the strap through. If you get a little speed on this, you can really get a nice burnish coming off of it. You know, I can feel it getting warm in my hands. <clears throat> That should be about that. Okay, good. So <clears throat> if you've done this right, this whole edge will kind of <clears throat> will kind of caramelize. Again, uh, I wish I had a little bit better lighting conditions. I'll take a picture of this when I get done and uh, make it the cover photo so you can see what's going on. But this should all get a nice kind of caramel appearance. Um, this is Herman Oak Veg Tan Leather, and it's lined with uh, Horween Latigo. So that's the combo that I'm working with. Both of these leathers burnish really well. Uh, bridle will burnish, harness will burnish, veg will burnish, you know. Um, and then when you get into combination tan leathers, they will burnish a little bit uh, as well. Um, you can get a burnish out of Chrome Excel if you really push it. Some of these other Horween leathers. So, all right, so I've dampened it again and now it's a matter of taking my paraffin wax and I am just going to <clears throat> apply wax to this edge. You, uh, you need a pretty healthy amount. You don't want it to slop all over your work, but you wanna make sure you have enough on this edge that you get even coverage. And this is gonna take a couple of passes to do, but Again, I'm doing more talking than polishing, and this is going right along. So, <clears throat> with the wax, I prefer the pull-through method with this glove. Um, I find that it builds more heat, uh, or builds heat more uniformly, and it takes less time. So I pulled it, <clears throat> it's getting darker, you know, yet glossier. And you're just gonna repeat this over and over again until you get it where you want it. Usually, you know, two or, or three coats of wax will completely solve it. <clears throat> but uh, you can also go through this, do the waxing portion, you know, then melt the wax into the belt and polish it. I mean, there's definitely some more exotic techniques you can use, but for regular strap goods, <clears throat> this is really all there is to it. And I hear about people taking hours to do this and it just isn't necessary, right? So I've reapplied. <clears throat> if you notice you've got some wax buildup on the edge and you need to polish that out, um, you can do that as well. Uh, looks like I've got a question about edge paint. Um, edge paint does work. Edge paint is actually surprisingly durable. Um, I had, so I made this alligator wallet for myself uh, some time ago and I edge painted it and I've carried this in my back pocket, just sitting on it pretty much every day for a year and the edge paint is still intact. 
So if you do a good job of edge painting, edge paint is a durable solution. The thing with edge paint is it is very time consuming and on straps like this, um, it's really unpleasant to do. <clears throat> you know, in that case, you really do need a fixture. You really do need a place to put it. Um, you know, you've got to deal with dry time. You've got to deal with drips. You got to deal with sanding. Uh, even applying it can be difficult. So, <clears throat> you know, you want to do whatever edge finishing method kind of fits with the aesthetic of what you're working on. Uh, my goods are predominantly Western or American classic. And for that, if I can burnish, I burnish. And uh, if I can't burnish, uh, you know, then I'll consider painting it. But it's certainly not something that I want to go out of my way to do, um, you know, unless it's what needs to happen. And there are certain goods that, I mean, they're just edge painted. Uh, when you start dealing with chrome tans, when you start dealing with fine goods, uh, basically anytime you deal with anything that either a burnish won't work or a burnish is not stylistically appropriate, you know, that's where you get into painting. And uh, I don't do a lot of painting, so I am not, I wouldn't consider myself an expert on it, but I've been around a lot of it. And I can give you a general left, right. Um, you know, Uniters makes a good edge paint. Fenice makes a good edge paint. Not all uh, edge paint requires a filatus. Uh, in fact, a lot of the paint that I have used didn't. Um, but I mean, that's a totally different animal. So <clears throat> different rabbit hole to go down. Today, we're just burnishing. And uh, I'm actually about there, people. Um, who knows, if I'd done less talking and more burnishing, I probably would have been done yesterday. But so this is what I would consider a finished edge. Um, I think you can probably see the shine in the video, if nothing else. Like I said, I'll take a picture for the cover photo, but you should have a, uh, a nice kind of caramel color. You should have a, uh, you should have a defined uh, transition line between the front and your lining, uh, unless you've done edge dye. If you've done edge dye, you shouldn't see a transition at all. But uh, it should be pretty obvious that you've got a uniform, smooth edge. And if you go back through here, you can look, and if there's anywhere on this edge, you see a little fuzzy starting to raise. Um, you know, you see anywhere that it's not uniform, you just go back and polish that out. And I mean, you don't have to, right? Uh, you know, I am a big believer in the philosophical, <clears throat> I am a big believer in the philosophical, uh, I've gone and lost my train of thought, concept. Big believer in the philosophical concept of generally accurate, which is to say you can go back and forth, polish, 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 polish. At some point, additional polishing doesn't do you any good, right? Uh, it's not making you feel good. The customer doesn't care. So you want to balance how nice it is <clears throat> versus how nice it's expected to be, right? And so if you're generally accurate, I think you've done all right. But the the other side of that coin is that the day that this piece leaves your shop is the nicest it's ever going to look. So if you have any reservations about the way that it looks, it's only going to get worse from there. So spend the time, make it a little bit nicer and, uh, you know, and send out work that you can be proud of. You know, there's a, an entire discussion out there. <clears throat> I'm going to set this aside for a second. There's an entire discussion out there about being satisfied with your work, right? And as craftsmen, you're going to chase that satisfaction, right? Um, as a craftsman, everything that I create, I'm simultaneously proud and horrified of, right? Like this belt... I know every flaw in this belt. I know everything that's wrong with it. I know everything I don't like about it. Every single thing about this belt, I know inside and out. 
and its imperfections prevent me from being fully satisfied with it. But, but that's a fight that you have to fight with yourself because you have to get to a point where you will allow someone else to be satisfied with your work, right? You've got to get to the point where you can set your own satisfaction aside and let somebody else say, yes, this is what I wanted. This is good enough, you know? And so that's where you need to get. And there's always going to be that gap between what you want to achieve and what you can achieve and, uh, and what's good enough and what isn't. And, and only you can determine that, but you can't get too wound around the axle with it. Right. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. Uh, so anyway, we're done. Um, this is a 30, this is a 30 something inch belt. And I mean, it took minutes to do, uh, it looks like we have one more question here. Um, it's hard to know how long a burnished edge will last because it depends on how it's being used. Right. Um, many times a belt will stay burnished just because it's being put on and taken off through denim belt loops all day. Um, but eventually a burnish will wear, you know, it'll get a little bit fuzzy. It'll get a little bit dark. It won't look, uh, you know, it won't look brand new anymore. And the beauty about a burnish is it's fairly easy to restore, dampen it, get some canvas, a little bit of soap, a little bit of wax, and you can repeat this process regardless of its age and, uh, and return it to its former, uh, former glory. And, uh, and that's all there is to it, right? Uh, very simple. It's an easy technique to have some success with. And this technique doesn't work just with straps. You can use it with odd shaped pieces. Um, I use it for saddle parts all the time. One layer, two layers, belts, straps, keepers, you name it. And this is probably the fastest, easiest way to get a good working burnish, um, you know, on your stuff. So hopefully this helps you. Hopefully it's something you can use. Um, and, uh, and as always, thank you for your support. I can't do what I do without, uh, you know, without it. So thank you so much. Um, and if you have any questions, if you've got any interest in other topics, whatever you have, uh, shoot me a message, uh, hit me up on Instagram and, uh, and I'll do what I can to put some more content out there. Um, I've had some machinery in the shop and I haven't been able to work for a little bit. And now that I'm getting it back, I've got YouTube available. Um, I can get out there and I can uh, produce a little bit of content on stuff that, uh, that you're going to want to learn about or know about or, uh, or whatever. So anyway, thank you for stopping by. Hopefully this helps and uh, happy burnishing. If I can fit up, oh, there we go. Right, and happy burnishing. I found the end stream button.